Welcome back to the podcast, guys. Hope you're all doing well out there. In this video, we're going to be talking about how a federal court in Minnesota has refused to dismiss a federal civil lawsuit that was brought by Smartmatic against Mike Lindell and his company, MyPillow Incorporated, for the election lies that him and his associates have told about that company as well as Dominion and uh, other companies that ran some of the election in 2020 that counted votes, right? So this was a lawsuit that was filed a while ago. They filed suit on the grounds mainly of defamation, reputational damages brought upon by the lies that were told by Mike Lindell, as well as vicarious uh, liability and a couple of other causes that we're going to go over here. Okay, so the judge explains here why he is ruling against Mike Lindell's side. So Mike Lindell's side uh, filed for summary judgment against the, the plaintiffs here. When a defendant asks a judge to dismiss a case on summary judgment, they are asking a very heavy thing. They're asking the judge to deny the opportunity of a jury trial to the plaintiffs by ruling that as a matter of law, that the plaintiffs have no meritorious claims that can be shown to a jury, meaning, meaning that there's not a single matter of fact that needs to be adjudicated in front of a jury. And therefore, this case need not go to a jury, but can be dismissed as a matter of law in front of a judge. So that's a very heavy thing to do, which means that the judge has to determine that the lawsuit is completely frivolous and there's no meritorious grounds that need to be adjudicated on by a jury. And therefore, the judge can dismiss the case out of hand in summary judgment. That's a heavy thing. OK, and the judge will look at the case carefully before doing that, because denying somebody a jury trial is a very heavy thing. And it's basically denying their opportunity to be heard in front of their peers. OK, so this is a serious thing. Summary judgment is no joke. And the judge went on to explain here why he is not going to dismiss the case on summary judgment, because the plaintiffs here certainly have grounds on defamation and other grounds to sue uh, Mike Lindell for his lies about the company uh, after the 2020 election. So let's take a look at what the judge had to say here. So this is a lawsuit, as you guys can see, in the District of Minnesota, Smartmatic USA versus Mike Lindell and MyPillow uh, Incorporated, which is his company. OK, so there are several grounds that they were suing on, but I want to first establish some matters of fact before we move on here. Los Angeles County engaged Smartmatic for the use of Smartmatic's technology in the 2020 election. Smartmatic did not provide election support to any other United States county or state during the 2020 election. Now, that is a very relevant fact, because if you want to claim that Smartmatic somehow overturned the election, how could they possibly do that when they were only running in one county, in my county, in Los Angeles? OK, so it's very important that that's why the judge is laying down these facts here as part of the background to this lawsuit. And by the way, Mike Lindell's side provided no evidence that Smartmatic or any other company somehow uh, changed the votes in favor of Joe Biden. Nobody has proven that. That's why over 60 courts, including Trump elected judges in those courts, ruled against Mike Lindell and the Kraken that was promised by Sidney Powell. Sidney Powell is, is close to losing her bar license because they lied on uh, court documents. Um, uh, what's his name? Giuliani already got his law license suspended uh, because of the fact that he lied on court documents. They were not able to prove any uh, any kind of election interference or any kind of uh, voter fraud, systematic voter fraud in these machines or in any of these uh, counties where they were running, okay? Between the 2016 presidential election and the 2020 presidential election, there was no material change in voting patterns in Los Angeles County. President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris won the U.S. general election in 20 uh, in November of 2020, securing 306 electoral votes. Former President Donald Trump and Vice President Pence secured 232 votes and lost the election. Smartmatic alleges that beginning in 2016, Lindell aligned himself with President Trump and his allies and eventually secured President Trump's endorsement of Lindell's MyPillow products. President Trump's support of MyPillow and Lindell increased Lindell's fame as well as success of MyPillow. According to Smartmatic, when President Trump lost the 2020 election and began to contest its uh, result, Lindell began to publicly promote the false narrative that the 2020 election was stolen, announcing that the voting machines had been hacked and rigged in favor of President Biden and Vice President Harris. Lindell claimed to have scientific 
mathematical and forensic and quote 100% proof that the voting machines were used to perpetrate election fraud. Lindell created and published a series of documentary videos and purported to provide evidence and facts substantiating his theory that the voting technology of Smartmatic and two other election technology companies, ESNS Systems, as well as Dominion, stole the 2020 election. Lindell advertised and provided election-related promotional codes for his products to viewers and listeners during internet television and radio show segments in which Lindell allegedly defamed Smartmatic and promoted his documentaries. Lindell also sponsored a March for Trump a bus tour to 20 cities promoting promoting the January 6th rally in Washington, D.C., during which Lindell rode in a bus bearing the MyPillow logo and endorsed the false narrative that former President Trump won the 2020 election. Lindell held an in-person live-streamed cyber symposium, quote-unquote, from August 10th to August 12th, during which he purported to uncover additional evidence that the election voting machines, including Smartmatic products, rigged the 2020 election. So they're talking about the company my pillow here because as you may have noticed they're suing the company too and the company here comes into play because of the vicarious liability cause that they sued him under okay we'll cover that in a second here the company itself is being held liable uh, or asked to be held liable by smartmatic because of the fact that the company itself benefited from the claims of fraud that linda was ma uh, was making so that's why they're suing the company and himself uh, as an employee of the company, okay? So let's go over the counts in the complaint that Smartmatic filed in their lawsuit against Mike Lindell and the company, and his company. Count one of the complaint alleges that Mike Lindell and MyPillow defamed Smartmatic when Lindell published false and inaccurate statements regarding uh, Smartmatic's involvement in the 2020 election and election hacking conspiracy theories. Count two alleges that Lindell's false and defamatory statements constitute deceptive trade practices in violation of Minnesota statute section 325D-448 uh, and that Lindell is Mike Pillow's agent. Lindell moves to dismiss Smartmatic's complaint, arguing that Smartmatic fails to plead its defamation claim adequately and that Smartmatic's claim for deceptive trade practices fails because it mirrors Smartmatic's defamation claims and pertains to statements made by Lindell in his personal rather than professional capacity. MyPillow separately moves to dismiss Smartmatic's complaint, arguing that MyPillow is shielded by the First Amendment to the Constitution hilarious. MyPillow did not make any statements about Smartmatic and Lindell's statements cannot be imputed by MyPillow. So in the first section of analysis here, the judge goes on to explain the threshold for dismissing a case on summary judgment. So I want to briefly go over that, then we'll move on to the judge taking apart the arguments of Mike Lindell's side. A complaint must be dismissed if it fails to state a claim on which relief can be granted according to the Federal Rules of Civil Procedure 12b6. To survive a Rule 12b6 motion, the complaint must allege sufficient facts that, when accepted as true, state a facially plausible claim to relief. And that comes from federal precedent set by Ashcroft v. Iqbal from 2009, as well as many other cases that have established that standard. When determining whether a complaint states such a claim, a district court accepts as true all factual allegations in the complaint and draws all reasonable inferences in plaintiff's favor. According to precedent set by Blankenship v. U.S. Uh, Trucks Incorporated from the Eighth Circuit Court of Appeals, 2010, the factual allegations need not be detailed, but they must be sufficient to, quote, raise a right to relief above the speculative level and, quote, state a claim to relief that is plausible on its face. Precedent set by Twombly, 2007. OK, so those are the standards for uh, sustaining a motion. Uh, and dismissing a motion on summary judgment. If it fails to make a, a legitimate claim, then the judge, a federal judge, can dismiss a case uh, on summary judgment. Okay, so that's why he explained this, and he goes on to explain things further, but we don't need to go over that right now. So now let's go over the judge taking apart the uh, arguments made by Mike Lindell's side. So first, on the cause of defamation. The parties dispute whether Smartmatic alleges facts sufficient to state a defamation claim against Mike Lindell or Mike Pillow. The judge goes on to explain to state a defamation claim a plaintiff must allege that the defendant made a statement that was false uh, 
The statement was communicated to someone besides the plaintiff. It was communicated to millions of people who believe that the election was rigged because of Mike, Mike Lindell's lie. So that's already established. And the statement, quote, tended to harm the plaintiff's reputation and to lower the plaintiff in the estimation of the community. And that certainly happened. Many people have doubts about electronic voting systems more than they did before 2020 because of the lies that have been spread by Mike Lindell and other people. So, so that standard is certainly met um, by the uh, pleadings in Smartmatic's uh, suit. To recover damages for defamatory falsehood, a public figure also must prove that the defamatory statement was made with actual malice. So this was the standard set by New York Times v. Sullivan back in 1964. We've talked about that before. Okay, so that that's that's the uh, standard for defamation that's set by federal precedents uh, in the past. Uh, moving on, the judge says a public figure must prove by clear and convincing evidence that the defendant made the alleged defamatory statements with actual malice, that is, with knowledge that it was false or with reckless disregard of whether it was false or not. Again, established by Sullivan, 1964. So first, let's go over the false statement. So after reviewing the pleadings, the judge concludes the following. The court concludes that Smartmatic has alleged sufficient facts to support its allegations that Lindell's statements were false. And when it comes to communications to third parties, that's obviously true. But the judge goes on to say the following. Smartmatic alleges that defendants promulgated uh, defamatory statements at a January 5th, 2021, Save the Republic rally in the U.S. Capitol in a defamatory documentary uh, video series about the 2020 election during at least 13 media appearances and through a in-person and live stream cyber symposium in August of 2021. Therefore, Smartmatic has alleged sufficient facts to support its allegation that Lindell's defamatory statements were communicated to uh, parties besides Smartmatic. And next, as to actual malice, after review of the pleadings and the facts, the court finds that Smartmatic has alleged facts sufficient to suggest that Lindell knew or should have known that his statements were, were false and acted with actual malice in promoting the uh, challenge statements regarding the lies about the 2020 election. Next, actual reputational harm. Lindell stated that Smartmatic was one of the several election technology companies that rigged the 2020 election, which caused people to believe that Smartmatic uh, technology could not be trusted. Smartmatic alleges that Lindell's defamatory statements made Smartmatic's name and brand synonymous with election fraud in the minds of the members of the public and government officials. Smartmatic also alleges that as a result of Lindell's defamatory st uh, remarks, Smartmatic's officers and employees have been threatened. And the company has expended over $1 million on public relations, crisis management, cybersecurity, and employee retention and recruitment efforts. So that's financial damages. So one of the many things that you have to prove in a jury trial, and this is going to be uh, in front of a jury now, if it doesn't get settled, you have to prove actual damages. Okay, You have to prove malice and damages to prove that you actually have a claim in front of a jury when it comes to defamation, okay? In order to sustain a civil lawsuit and to win a civil lawsuit, you have to prove uh, the actual causes that you're claiming like defamation. So you have to prove actual malice. Also, aside from that, you have to prove that you were financially damages. You have to prove damages, okay? In order for a jury to even start to contemplate ruling in your favor, you have to show that the things that the other side did hurt you financially. That's what you have to do in civil litigation. Civil lawsuits are about money. Lawsuits, you see, are ultimately about money. Putting a dollar figure on suffering. Okay, and you have to prove damages, and that's exactly what they did here. If they're claiming it here, that means they have the receipts to show that they have to expend millions of dollars due to the lies that were spread by Mike Lindell. So, bam, this makes me think that they're going to win this suit in front of a jury, but we have to see, okay? Smartmatic goes on to say Smartmatic alleges that its business depends on its reputation for safety, accuracy and auditability and that Lindell's defamatory statements have tarnished Smartmatic's reputation. The court concludes that Smartmatic has alleged facts sufficient to support a claim of reputational harm resulting from Lindell's defamatory statements. Next, vicarious liability. So first, what is vicarious liability? Well, as you guys can see on the screen, Vicarious liability is a liability that a supervisory party, such as an employer, 
bears for the actionable conduct of a subordinate or associate such as an employee based on the relationship between the two parties. So their one of their claims is vicarious liability, and that's what they're using to bring in my pillow incorporated because mike lindell is technically employed by that company and vicarious liability allows smartmatic to bring in the company as one of the liable parties because of the actions of mike lindell so the judge explains here smartmatic alleges that mike lindell used the platform he gained making defamatory statements about smartmatic as a means for promoting my pillow such that my pillow should be held vicariously liable for Lindell's defamation. While he was promoting his election lies, he was also promoting MyPillow products so that he was combining the two and acting as an employee of the company while doing so, while lying about Smartmatic and other companies. So as he explains here, Lindell, the CEO of MyPillow, intentionally promoted MyPillow while allegedly defaming Smartmatic in media and other uh, public appearances. Lindell used the MyPillow logo during media appearances in which he allegedly defamed Smartmatic. He certainly defamed Smartmatic. During these appearances, M Lindell promoted the MyPillow business and provided audiences with promotional codes to use when buying MyPillow products. The MyPillow promotional codes Lindell relayed uh, to audiences use words and phrases that correlated to Lindell's defamatory statements. For this reason, the court denies MyPillow's motion to dismiss on the issue of vicarious liability because the company was clearly made liable by the fact that Lindell fused the election lies together with his business and therefore he was acting as an extension of the company, not just as an individual, okay, as MyPillow claimed. And for that reason, the judge ruled against MyPillow and Mike Lindell. Next, deceptive trade practices. Under the MDTPL, a person engages in a deceptive trade practice when in course of business vocation or occupation, the person disparages the goods, services, or business of another by false or misleading representation of fact. According to Minnesota State Law Section 325D44, Subdivision 1.8, the court concludes that Smartmatic's allegations also are actionable under the MDTPL because the MDTPL expressly contemplates that a plaintiff may pursue claims under both the MDTPL and the common law, Smartmatic's MDTPL claim is not impermissibly duplicative of its defamation claims. So what the judge is talking about here is the fact that Mike Lindell's side claimed that the deceptive trade claim that was made by Smartmatic was duplicative along with the defamation claim, which is hilarious because defamation is completely separate from the deceptive trade practices law, which there's a specific law in Minnesota that they were asking for the judge uh, to allow this cause. So clearly by law, they can have a defamation claim and a deceptive practices claim. And that's why the judge ruled that it is not duplicative. OK, and after explaining all of that, the judge ordered the following based on the foregoing analysis and all the files, records and proceedings herein. It is hereby ordered. Number one, defendant Mike Lindell's motion to dismiss is denied and defendant my pillow incorporated motion to dismiss is also denied. So as I explained in summary judgment, if you're asking for a lawsuit to be completely dismissed without a jury trial, you have to prove as a matter of law that the uh, plaintiffs have no meritorious claims, uh, which the judge can allow for a jury trial to proceed. And clearly, Smartmatic has many different claims, valid claims, meritorious claims, that they can proceed to a jury trial on, and that is why the judge has dismissed Mike Lindell's claims. Not only did Mike Lindell lie about Smartmatic and all these companies in 2020 and in 2021, but he continues to lie about them today. He's still claiming that he has evidence against Smartmatic and all these election uh, counting companies, when in reality, he has no such evidence. Okay. And even though he's being sued by all these companies, he's still repeating these lies. This guy is going to go bankrupt after all these uh, lawsuits are fully adjudicated. I believe the Dominion one is still going on. Some parties settled with them because they sued many different people for their lies. Uh, I'm not sure exactly where their case stands as far as Mike Lindell goes. I'll look into that. But Smartmatic certainly is moving forward to a jury trial. So there might be a settlement here where Mike Lindell admits to himself or his company forces him to him to admit to himself that he that he was wrong. 
I doubt it, but we'll see how it goes uh, going forward, what happens, and I'll be reporting further news as it happens. And that's all I got to say for this video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, make sure to like the video, subscribe, hit the bell, press all for future videos. And if you like my videos and you want to support my show, you can do so by joining channel memberships down below by clicking the blue join button. And you can also support the show on Patreon. There'll be a link in the description box down below. Your support is much appreciated. See you guys in my next video. As always, peace. Good morning, Mega City One. I'm Enigma Smith, and this is your news. Today is the 12th anniversary of the end of Necropolis, the Dark Judge's reign of terror. The four alien super fiends from another dimension believe all life is a crime, and the only appropriate sentence is death. 60 million citizens were murdered by the Dark Judges during Necropolis. The Holocaust was finally stopped thanks to legendary lawman Judge Dredd. Twelve years on, the Dark Judges are held in maximum security ISO blocks around the city. What really happened during Necropolis? Have the Dark Judges been made scapegoats, as some people suggest? Mega City Today devotes its entire broadcast to these complex issues. More after this commercial break.